find the job at the studio that you want to work at. Wow, that is, I didn't even know about the second part. That's awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's called um, Bring Your Own Project. So you can bring your own demo reel. You can bring your, uh, if you're getting feedback from the, from the mentors, uh, you have to be a senior student or beyond. So uh, if you're a new student, you can come and you can watch, but you won't be able to get feedback just yet. But if you're working on your senior film, if you're working on your demo reel, uh, if you're applying for jobs, if you're trying to get in, um, yeah, we have mentors. I have mentors that will look at your work, give you the exact feedback that you'd get if you were in the studio. So you would know exactly what that process looks like, what that feels like before you even get the job. So you don't have to be afraid once you start your first animation career. That is beyond awesome. Now, I know at least several people that probably graduated college when I did, which is good grief, 97. Um, so, and a lot of them are like, yes, I want to get into this. I want to get into storyboarding. I want to get into, I want to get into this. Um, so my question is, um, are, is it just for people who are actually in school or is it for people who are actually out there actually saying, I think I've got something can I actually move this direction? Does that make any sense? Oh, I think so. I, I think that if you, uh, the only thing that, the only reason why we, why I, I say uh, senior students and above is because we can't really do your animation homework for you. Right. <laughs> you can't bring us, you can't bring us a bouncing ball exercise and we're going <laughs> to, there's, there's, we have to have a limit. <laughs> We have to have a limit. So, uh, so that's kind of it. Um, and so, yeah, if you're, if, I mean, if you've, if you've taken to learning animation in your own spare time, yeah, bring it over. Like that's, that's great. Like, again, like if you're trying to develop something, but the skills that we're trying to pass on and pass down is like specifically that, that level of professionalism and that eye for detail, um, yeah, that eye for detail that takes a, a while for people to develop. So that's what we're trying to um, influence and, and pass down sooner so that you can kind of start learning. Uh, and then if you don't know, you can just come and you can watch. It's it's affordable. So you can just come, you can watch uh, and then you can start developing that eye before you even sit in that hot seat. Loving that. So I have a question for you and I did not send you this question, but I'm curious based on what you said so far. I've heard um, in some circles that there is a knowledge gap between what colleges and maybe even some trades um, teach with respect to rigging versus what uh, the industry needs. Like there's the, mm -hmm. like they're coming in and they're missing them. Has that been your experience or, 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 or are you, is this part of the answer to solving that riddle or knowledge gap? Um, yeah, it's definitely a part of it. And it, it is not all schools um, and it's not all education. I've definitely worked with teachers in the past who are so passionate about animation and they can be it, that, that that's not necessarily their job. It's not necessarily their skill, um, but they 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 take it on uh, kind of as a gift to the students. Like they can see the benefit, they can see the interest. Um, but then at the same time, the animation industry evolves so quickly. Innovation moves so fast. So in a sense, it's almost unfair to put those kinds of skills on to the teachers. So it's it's definitely a very unweighted scale not unweighted but unevenly weighted scale like it's it's tough it would be tough to be a teacher to keep up with um the animation industry for sure so it almost reminds me of uh when people graduate high school they they go through quote unquote like the little or they're doing a the college prep so now there almost mm -hmm. needs to be in like an industry prep <laughs> so it's like yeah I guess so. that, middle, that little middle space there that's a good way of putting it yeah Mm-hmm. Coolness. So um, I'm going to bug you with some questions, I think. Uh, my first question to you, it's kind of a weird one, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with it. I had to do a caveat, but here it is. I love weird questions. <laughs> Bring it on. Quantum Leap. You can travel to any point in the timeline of animation history. You're on a one year visa and this is important. You lose no rights or privileges that you currently have. Where and when do you go and why? Um, 
I would go to, I would go to like the era of Godzilla stop motion. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I live in a jungle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would love to um, tinker on sets, make little trees, make it snow. Uh, that would be so much fun. Mm-hmm. That is, I never thought about that. That, uh, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. That would be so much hard work and back breaking labor, but I think it would be so worth it. <laughs> um, I think one of the, uh, the uh, they just, uh, um, it just came over the thing that one of the um, founding members passed of like the Rankin, ba- Rankin Bass stop motion things. That would be something to be, cause like to sit on those sets, like, cause those things are freaking huge. Mm-hmm. Um, just to be able to see what's going on there. And it's like, um, one part of me wants to go back, go back at that point, And the other part of me, um, I was talking to, um, Laren DeJarnett and it's like, the other part of me wants to go, can we bring you all to the future for a second? Kind of let y'all animate some of that stuff with the current software and how quickly you can get stuff done now. Like how cool would that be? Interesting. Right. <laughs> Uh, so 30, 30, 15, um, 30 days a day, excuse me, 30 minutes a day for 30 days is 15 hours. What could you do start or finish in 15 hours? So if I said to you for November 1st, um, you're going to do a animation themed 30, 30, 15, what would it be? Is this a real challenge? <laughs> Am I going to have to it's, do this it's, in the end? Much, it's, it's, it's 30, 30, 15 is something I've talked about Am I committing to something years. right here? <laughs> 30, 30, 15 is something I've talked about for years. And okay. um, it's something that one of my first uh, Toon Boom things I actually did on my own, uh, making a little explainer video for it. But I think I am going to go ahead and probably officially make it for all the listeners. Gonna, oh, yeah, let's, let's say on November 1st, let's... Uh, Let's do a thing. And the, the, what people have to understand is, is it saying that you get it done? No, it simply says you can okay. start, finish, or, you know. This but. is honestly how anything gets started. So, <laughs> um, and I understand that very well. Uh, I, I think that if I was to do something in November, I would probably do something for the programs that I've just set up. Like, um, I'm not in the... I'm not in a position to animate something for it right now, but it would be really cool to get there. Uh, so if I had to start that, I would probably do an animated logo or some sort of opener. Mm-hmm. Sweet. That's right. I have a question. I don't think I've actually sent you. What's your favorite tool in Harmony and why? Um, I'm pretty sure I answered this last time. It's the hammer tool. <laughs> yes, you did answer that. <laughs> Like you had, the you had the, so the, I have to pick another line, one. Yeah, the line, the line build, and I was the watching. Line build, um, yes, thank you. I I always call it the icon. The hammer tool. Yeah, I was like, well, yeah. it's, like, it's, it's not the hammer tool is not to be confused with the hammer wrench tool, which is the rigging tool. <laughs> so it's like, oh, but, I don't even know that tool. That's a new tool. Well, like, well, you know, when you go up and turn on, like, if you're trying to use your deformers, it's where it's like the. Oh the yes. Okay. 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 They have that same little icon. So, Um, yeah, the I was watching something recently that um, um, Mel did, a.k.a. the bird brain. And she was showing I had been following what you taught me last year. And I've been and I've been just kind of going the lines right ending, touching right at the line. And that's all I was using it for. And then I watch mel do something where she was overlapping the lines and drawing it and then they were connecting i'm just like wait what (laughs) because and i just saw that the other day and i was i literally was going to my class was going okay did anyone else know this because i didn't know this (laughs) i think that's i think that's a a newer feature from um from like one of the pre like one maybe 21 harmony 21 yeah Mm Yeah, um, that and what was it? Um, she was mixing in um, using a thick and thin line, um, the tapered line, but then going in and erasing part of the line so it continues. And I was just like, wait, what? So I don't know if she's you've seen a it. wizard. She's a wizard. She's a wizard with drawing within harmony. So I'd have to see it to. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it sounds confusing, but I'm sure no, it looks amazing. 
No, it's here's the thing, and that's that's the thing. It's like I love and um, shout out to the bird brain. Love and matter of, fact, matter of fact, most of the harmony people, yourself included, I I love and hate all of you because it'll be like, oh my god, that's brilliant. I hate you. Why did I not come up with that? Um, so it's like, and her ability to do um, a tutorial that fast and make it that you understand. It, I'm like. Meanwhile, I'm here going, so 20 minutes in, <laughs> this is where we're going to be. It's, it takes an effort. It's hard. It, I think that's the hardest part um, about relaying information is how do you make it easy for the other? And how do you simplify it so much um, so that you're still having all that information, right. but you're, you're making it easy to understand? It's definitely an art form. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, I did something recently, I was, and I was very proud of myself because I was talking about uh, how you turn on and off the visibility of layer or of the nodes. And so I was like, yeah, it's, it's D for disable and it's a for enable. And I'm sitting there in the middle of training. This is, I think this is just this, um, I was doing some training for two of this term and it occurred to me, I was like, uh, D for disappear, a for appear. I was like, yes, that's what it is. So I was like, it's not that officially, but you're going to remember this now. <laughs> Sorry, my dog. <laughs> no worries. All right. So my question is, they should totally remake blank as a cartoon. What's in that blank, if anything? Um, you know, I want to see. I want to see Mary Blair. Oh. Yeah. That would be a beautiful odyssey. Yeah, old Mabel. Yeah, I would love to see Mary Blair's work animated, even if it's just a living paint, a painting, even if it's, um, I was just at Disney World, so I was kind of immersed in it, and I just love her work so much. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No <laughs> worries. <laughs> Wait, I can throw it. Let me throw a, Mabel, hey. It distracts her. It's a treat. It's a little oh, treat gone. Love it. So I think I got one last question for you. Um, given the advances and the availability of software and technology, as well as the growing number of streaming platforms, there has never been a better time for independent animators to independent animators to put out their own projects or their own products than there is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you agree or disagree and why? Um, To put out content? Yes. Yeah, I do. I do agree with that. I do think that um, if you have the ability to pitch something, um, that it's worth it right now. I think content is still at an all time high. Um, I would I would go for it. Mm -hmm. Content demand is on an all time high, I should say. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now, there there is a question that I and I kept running into in um, uh, one of my former students, and I've mentioned them several times. Um, She'll kick me, but oh, well. Um, Hey, Kayla. Um, So and I'm saying that because I like I mentioned I've mentioned this several times throughout the uh, summit to talking to different people. (laughs) So let me ask you a question. In your experience, if you said, let's say if you had a show you wanted to pitch, would you um, put together an animatic or would you put together a pilot? It's, I'm gonna throw it back to that. You take the first step that you can. Uh, an animatic is gonna come way before a pilot. It's a lot of work uh, to put together a pilot. Um, I think that if you have a very compelling animatic, you don't need to go to pilot. I think that what's important when you're pitching is that you really need to know your characters. You need to know the story. Um, You need to know uh, what drives them, um, like what their ambitions are, like what their internal motivations are. I think that if you can make that clear in an animatic or a or, uh, or just a, like a vocal pitch. Um, I don't think you need to go to pilot. I think pilot might even be putting too many eggs in one basket, uh, especially if people want to have a little bit of extra input. Sometimes when you pitch, a lot of questions come back at you. 
Okay. So you, you, you almost get a little bit of feedback every time you pitch. So if you go to pilot without getting any of those feedbacks, you might be missing out on the actual opportunity to go to pilot. Uh, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Yes. Um, it, remind, it reminded me of something uh, Mark Simon was talking about where, uh, where your, your script needs to be printed out. There's nothing, don't no fancy binders. It's just like, mm-hmm. like regular paper staple in that for corner. Cause it says to them, Hey, I'm open to your ideas <laughs> versus it being pressed and laminated and going behold yeah. <laughs> here <laughs> here's your future pilot <laughs> yes you don't need to do anything i've done it all i've thought all everything for everything yeah mm-hmm. so yeah just giving them the that nod that hey thinking of you what do you guys think what do you want to add yeah so cool. yeah i think that also if you're going to go to pitch like i think it might be more valuable to save some time and then you could pitch five ideas instead of one I love that. Okay. If you think about time management in that sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. That makes a darn that that so that does make a lot more sense. <laughs> I didn't even think about yeah. it that way. I I actually um I got to sit in for the pitch this um at OAF uh, a couple of years now. So I'm always taking notes and uh, that's actually something that I've thought about a lot. Like what makes a good pitch? Like what makes um, a pitch compelling? Uh, and I've taken a ton of notes. So actually I'm planning on doing a blog post about that. Um, soon. Mm. I want to say that. <laughs> Definitely want to see that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, and how do we find you? What's your address? Like, um, how often are these things going to be running? Uh, your uh, Twitch streams? Uh, Twitch streams are weekly. Uh, so I do that every Tuesday um, at four o'clock, four to six. Um, there's always like a little bit of a lag before I start because Mabel, I don't know, four o'clock, she started to bark at the computer. So, <laughs> uh, so at four o'clock, she starts to say hello and um, then we keep going. Uh, and you can find me there on Lynn's Day K. So it's not Lindsay K, it's Lynn's Day K, all my socials. So you can find me on Instagram at Lynn's Day K with an underscore. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn under Lindsay Noller. And then you can also go to my website uh, where you can actually book your spots um, for the BYOP program. Uh, and that's lindsaynoller.ca. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Oh, my pleasure. I love talking to you, Tony. Thank you. That means a lot. And the feeling is mutual because, yeah, I love picking your brain and I'll be picking your brain on stuff later. (laughs) So this has been Tony Ross for the 2D Animation Virtual Summit, hanging out with Miss Lindsay Noller. Say bye. Bye. Alrighty, so that was Lindsay. So we seem to be having, there was some weird thing. I think it's done now. There was a weird little glitch. Um, I don't know if that was my interwebs, their interwebs, it's been tricky. So um, worst case scenario, of course, all of these will be, um, the all of the things will be linked together in a playlist. The summit as it was with me commenting and doing all those other things, and that will be one playlist. And then, of course, the other playlist will have the full um, interviews and things like that. Um, speaking of, when I show Mark's later, Mark's uh, presentation is like about an hour long. I'm going to play it in its entirety because I think it's all important. I don't want to break that up. Um, also, Laren, um, Laren Dejarnet is coming up, I think, around his is going to be around two. I'm going to also play that one fully through because um, it'll be the last one of the day. But uh, what we have coming up is uh, my, so for those, like I said, part of my, part of my Tomb Boom family, this is uh, coming from, um, from Katie. Yeah, I know. Interesting ideas. There's, there's a, like I said, a, there, I know a couple of people and I know a couple of people who are trying to, t- trying to pitch and what I did was I wanted to definitely, uh, one of the first people I reached out to was, uh, uh, Mark Simon and 
uh, he's like, uh, I said, I'm kind of doing this thing about independent animators, but I also want to do something about pitching. And Mark goes, do you, do you want me to do something on pitching? And I'm like, I thought you'd never ask because I know. And by the way, if you skip this, it's him giving stuff away for free. So if you skip this, letting you know, Mark isn't cheap. So um, I think it's kind of a, I think he believes in what we're doing here and he likes giving out that information. So yeah, you got to listen to it. There's some, some ex excellent surprises that I wasn't aware of. Um, and I think it's not only really good for pitching, but even with respect to, going out for jobs uh some of the things he was mentioning so meanwhile uh, i'm gonna bring up um our next um, interview uh whether you all know this about know this or not one i love working with tomb boom products but i also work with the company directly they have started doing classes like they have them about every quarter or every season or sometimes twice a quarter um but if you're just learning or trying to learn the programs and stuff like that, um, they have different uh, programs that are out. I think the next session comes up in January. Um, I usually teach the beginning classes, so I want to go ahead and bring that up and let Katie explain the rest. Hold on one second. At least I was. Hold that thought. While I'm waiting, I'm going to bring up something that we're going to start doing in January here. Hey. Remember that thing that you're going to do, learn, or try, if you could ever find the time? Guess what? Even on your busiest day, you have 30 minutes somewhere to spare. You know what else? 30 minutes a day for 30 days is 15 hours. What project could you do, start, or finish in 15 hours? We challenge you to take 30 minutes a day for the next 30 days and find out. 30, 30, 15. Changing your life 30 minutes at a time. You should get Jesse J. Jones on sometime. I think he's on my list, and I'm not sure if I've sent out an email yet, but yes. Um, there is, um, and even this year, there's, um, there are at least... I'll say 20 to 30 people and I'm going like, yes, I want to do this person, this person, this person, which is also why we're going to end up doing um, a podcast here. So I am looking for a file that I have misplaced. Why have I misplaced the file? Okay. So, um, while I am trying to do that, um, a brief second here figure out what's going on in our background. <laughs> All right, we'll have to play that one later. That's a weird happening there. Okay, so, um, shift where we can. Uh, yeah, I'll have to play that a little bit later today. Uh, let me think, who's coming up next? All right, I'm going to see if I can pull up our video here. Now this might be the raw video, we will see.
Hey, this is Tony Ross for the 2D Animation Virtual Summit, and I am hanging out with a member of my Toon Boom family, and we exchange emails a lot. I'm not sure. Is this our first Zoom we've ever done? I think this is our first Zoom. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, everyone, meet Katie. And I'm not going to mess up your last name, because it <laughs> looks cool as hell. Um, <laughs> That's me, Katie Renee DeCotre. <laughs> Katie Renee Decotre. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay. Nailed it. Okay. Awesome. I just normally call her Katie. So I just was like, oh, wow. That's, that's like, I never noticed the wife. Like, what is her last name? Okay. Let me ask her. <laughs> so um, I've invited Katie because I wanted to, I think last year we got to talk to AJ. And this year we're talking to Katie and we're talking about the uh, classes that Toon Boom offers um, pretty much every quarter. Um, I mm -hmm. tend to, my the main class that I love and I, I've taught like, it feels like hundreds of times, but I always teach the Harmony Fundamentals class. And I wanted to invite Katie to give a little more information on the classes. And quite frankly, there's some answers that I need. So I'm going to ask you those. <laughs> so. Awesome. Happy to answer. Okay, cool. <laughs> Question number one. Um, as far as the classes, can absolutely complete beginners sign up for these, or or is this hey, have you already gone through our tutorials online? <laughs> so who can sign up for the classes? A uh, hundred percent, anybody can. And you could know nothing; you just need a little bit of basic computer knowledge, hopefully, uh, and then you'll be able to be to learn the software from the ground up. So all of our introductory courses uh, will include the same day one primer on the software and how it works and how you can begin working with it and drawing in it. And by the end of it, you should be some kind of animator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never thought about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll think all of the classes do have that. Here is this mm -hmm. tool. Here is how this works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Um, so what classes are offered? OK, so this is where we're going to get a little uh, wordy. <laughs> OK. So we've got three different categories of classes. We've got our fundamentals. So like you teach Harmony Fundamentals for us a lot. Love that. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the specialized introductory courses, which they focus on a little more of a specific aspect of the software, but they're still introductory. You're still going to get that day one primer. So if you know exactly what it is you want to get into, you'd be taking one of those. And then the advanced ones will build on your previous knowledge. So those are the ones where Maybe not a beginner should be starting out with advanced rigging. That might be a little too much. Okay. So for our fundamental classes, uh, we've got the Harmony Fundamentals. So anybody who just wants to get a general overview of the software, they maybe they want to animate, maybe they want to rig characters, maybe they want to draw in it. Harmony Fundamentals is where it's at. Uh, Storyboard Pro Fundamentals we also have if you want to be uh, learning how to storyboard and you're interested in learning those digital techniques. Lots of people use Storyboard Pro, even studios that never touch Harmony. Storyboard Pro is just better at storyboarding than, say, Photoshop. Who said that? <laughs> Not I, me. I, I would agree, yes. <laughs> I, have a, I have one friend who just kept being like, no, I just do it in Photoshop. I'm like, why? <laughs> let, me, let me talk to you a little more. Uh, we also have Train the Teacher Harmony. So that we have Train the Teacher Harmony and Storyboard Pro. So these are still fundamental courses, but more aimed at teachers who want to bring it into like the kindergarten. They call it K-12. So I assume it's kindergarten to grade 12 curriculum. Yeah, I can't I, imagine I, teaching a kindergarten. I can't either. And I've, I've, I've I think it's just grade that. school. <laughs> why, is it, why is there a K there? What's going on? <laughs> it must just be the designation of what schools are called. I never thought about it until I had to say it out loud in this moment. Yeah, was, you just saw uh, that revelation happen. <laughs> I've, I've read that a couple of times in my I'm not sure we're going to maybe, maybe, no. <laughs> Some five-year-olds can be real good animators of it. <laughs> yeah, so they, they also sort of try to focus on, like, giving teachers uh, tips on how to teach their classrooms and align lessons with the uh, certification learning objections. Objectives, not objections. I'm really good at words this morning. Hello. <laughs> this is great for an interview. Oh, it's um, an interview. <laughs> So we have that for Harmony and Storyboard Pro. Um, and then we get into the more specialized introductory ones. So intro to rigging, like let's say you want to be the person who makes the character builds. 
these are a little more technical, uh, a little less animation -y, but you're really getting into the nitty gritty of how everything connects in harmony and how you can build a character for studio productions. Uh, if you are more interested in the animation side of things, uh, two courses for that one. We've got cutout animation. So if you are new to cutout, but you're kind of familiar with some basic animation principles, um, that this one's going to teach you to use a rigged character to animate with. And if you're not interested in rigs, like some people are not at all, uh, then we have paperless animation. So we call, um, I like to call it tradigital, but that never caught on. So I, I, I've, I've, heard, I've heard, it. I've also, also used the I, digital. It's like, it just seems nice. I used to use that when I was a teacher. I'd be like, let's do some tradigital animation. <laughs> um, and maybe I just sounded really lame. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm already not the hip teacher anymore. Um, but that's for when you're you're drawing digitally and you're doing all of your animation hand-drawn frame by frame, as opposed to your cutout characters that are already rigged and ready to go. And you don't have to draw anything in theory. Um, so those are our animation courses. There are not currently any advanced versions of those. You take that and you're done. Um, but then we have compositing which is how you do um, your effects in Harmony, your, your shadows, your lighting, your reflections, all of that very cool things. I am not a compositor. I don't know how to composite very well, but I try. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know. I don't consider myself a compositor. I love it. <laughs> like it, look, it always looks super cool when they come in they're like okay we did all the lights and shadows and textures and you're just like wow <laughs> and then you open up the network and it's the node view and it's just like oh this is big there's so many bits can i unplug this no don't touch that <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i know like i know i've gone through the i know enough about it to go i want to know more um <laughs> Like, because in the fundamentals, we're normally doing, we covered like a little bit of everything. Yeah. And so the uh, compositing that's there, like working with the um, the otter. Right. I, yeah. I, I love that. And then showing people like, hey, we're going to do light several ways here. Here's how to do this. And here's how to do this. Like, we're going to make this big vector look like a light. <laughs> Let's blur the hell <laughs> out of it. You know, and it's just like, this is kind of cool. And I know at least on one occasion, I had uh, one of my students that was an animator going, holy crap, I want to be a compositor now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, like, I always found it so interesting because I used to teach uh, here in Ottawa at Algonquin College where there were some students where like they loved the field of animation, but actually animating was like just the, a nightmare for them. Yes. But then like they, they'd see harmony, they'd start touching rigging and they go, oh, I really like that sort of technical puzzle solving that that involves instead. Can I do that as a job? It's like, yes, please. We always need more riggers. <laughs> I was joking with um, Colin Bennett, um, aka Onion Skin, that one of the jobs needs to be um, Node View Janitor. <laughs> it's like, yes. It's like, it's like, do you do rigging? No. Do you do you animate? No. My job is to clean up the Node View. That's all I do. <laughs> just, just like, just have that little. I feel like I would love that actually. <laughs> Just like a little tedious, sit there and be like, and now I align them all horizontally. Beautiful. <laughs> I love a clean note view. Because I would work with first year students, right? Never touched a software before in their life, you would think. Uh, and so then their nerve view, all their nodes are just piled on top of each other. And you're like, oh, sweetie, okay, let's let's troubleshoot this. <laughs> what went wrong? <laughs> I've been trying to coin the uh, and teaching and all of my um, fundamental things like, Let's do a little bit, of, a little bit of node view etiquette here. <laughs> oh, I love that node view etiquette. I'm gonna write that down. Make sure this is aligned. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, will it still work if it's over here? Yes. Are people gonna yell at you if you send this to them? Yes. <laughs> Silently be... scream as they try to sort out what went wrong. <laughs> Coolness. Okay. <laughs> so here's my question, and this is um, so. Sure. Like, I, I think I sent this to AJ the other day and realized he is out. It's like. Um, <laughs> Is there an order? Like, what class should I take after Harmony Fundamentals? Okay, so there's not really an order. It depends on what you're interested in. Because with all of the, say, the specialized introductory courses we just talked about and the foundation courses, um, they're all going to have that same intro class. So in theory, you could take any of those to start with. The only ones that you'd be kind of uh, lost in would be the advanced rigging, advanced compositing, and definitely the technical director. You don't want to take technical director without any kind of previous knowledge there. Um, 
But otherwise, if you're, say, a student who likes the more technical side of things, uh, rigging may be for you. So you might just start with intro to rigging. You might skip harmony fundamentals altogether. You're still going to have that day one introductory class. And maybe if you did take fundamentals and you want to go into rigging and you take both, I still wouldn't recommend skipping that fundamental class, that very first one. Right. Um, because every teacher is going to have like a little bit of a different setup. You know, we we do our outline and everything and hopefully everyone's teaching things the same way. But, uh, you know, they're called preferences for a reason. Some yes. teachers are going to have different preferences than others. And so there's always new little tidbits to learn there where sometimes I'll watch back a recording and be like, you can do what? Let me try that. Like I've used <laughs> the software for 10 years or something and I'm still like, that turns green if you do this. <laughs> you know? There was um who was uh um Mel not Mac AKA <laughs> AKA is a bird brain. I <laughs> saw her do something the other day. Um, she just posted a video like how how to use the line tool like a pro, and I'm thinking like okay sure I know most of this, and I watched it and I think I was mostly through this uh, term as far as the classes, and I was going wait wait what holy. <laughs> So I had to go back to my oh class. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I can't take credit for this. Here's a YouTube video, but this is what... The... And I was like, did anyone else know that? And everyone was like, no. I said, me neither. <laughs> so Burbrain's <laughs> YouTube channel is really, really good. I learned yeah, so yeah. much there. Occasionally I ask her a question because she works with us here at TubeBoo. And I'll be like, how do I do this? If she just sends me one of her videos and I'm like, thank you. I will not bother you with <laughs> I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. I I I, I interviewed her. Um, I want to say it was like well, maybe the second summit, but I was asking her. I said, "Oh, what pitch shift software do you use uh, for your thing?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm not using that. I just speed up my video because I think I talk too slow." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just gotta keep them little bite-sized bits, you know. Like, a five minute video is pretty digestible. <laughs> I um, think it was one of your videos where I learned that you could like edit TPLs from inside Harmony and that blew my ding dang mind. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, and how, the other reminder was like, I don't teach that, I don't teach that as often as I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious, like, a matter of fact, I think I'm, uh, I just finished doing, I did my first little thing of uh, what intro to rigging. And I'm like, now I'm curious. I'm like, what is cutout animation? Like, I think I'm going to look and in, look into that one or compositing. So, mm -hmm. okay. So my next question for you is, when um, does the next series of classes start? So we're currently looking into that now because uh, it varies a lot of how, like, when we're going to run them. But it, we're looking to mid to late January for the next set of classes. Okay. We want to sort of revamp our processes. We've got a bunch of new assets that were just created. Um, I'm really excited to see those in action. And with the new version of the software out, we want to implement some of those new techniques in there. Um, especially, I don't know if you've taken a look at the OpenGL handles, but I'm really excited to use those. No. Oh, I oh I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, they're they're going to make cutout animation. They're, they're make the node view a whole lot cleaner because you no longer need those little extra nodes for a tag. That'll just be like a built-in oh, wow. thing you can have. Oh, they're so cool. Okay. I'll send you a video later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Because, yeah, that's, that, I, wow. That, that answers my other question. So, um, <laughs> in theory, so the one in January, we're going to be using um, Harmony 22. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Let's see. And that was I kept kind of mixed in with like, how often do these run? I guess they kind of like... Like every four months-ish. Like it depends on the, the demand and um, when we're ready to go. Okay. Um, if I'm signing up for a class, do I already need to own the software? No, you will get a license for as long as the class runs. So you don't have to worry about needing to spend extra money on that. And I think that's part of why the, uh, the price is what it is. Okay. Very cool. I had a bunch of students ask this um, <laughs> in the last class I was teaching because we're teaching in the middle of and then Harmony 22 came out and said, are we going to get a discount? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so, don't <laughs> they know very to... rarely have discounts, but sometimes Black Friday they will. Sometimes. Okay. So everyone mark that kind of. Don't quote me on that. Don't. don't... <laughs> 
but quick maybe, cut. <laughs> maybe <laughs> we are not. We are. We are not. What is it? Uh, like any views or opinions expressed here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any inside knowledge on on sales or anything. Uh, that's just what's happened in previous years. <laughs> there, there, it's like I've always said this, and I've probably said it on a couple of recordings. But uh, I would say, like, I love my Tomb Boom family, but uh, y'all are as secretive as Apple when it comes to doing things. <laughs> it's because like, they'll just like not tell us things. So yeah. even if we wanted to spill, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> so like Tony, when does this happen? I have no clue. <laughs> None, zero. Like, are they doing? I don't know. <laughs> I've had a lot of people ask me, "When does it go on sale?" And I'm like, I don't, "I'm not a salesperson. I don't know. <laughs> it's not my department." <laughs> that's the, that's the the other cool thing because I'll I'll say <laughs> something because um, it's like y'all all know and talk to each other, but it's like I'll say. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you need to ask so-and-so. Oh, okay. Let me go over here. <laughs> so, like, like all the different, the different departments, there's sales. And I call, um, oh my gosh, it's not what it's called, but I call working with, uh, you and AJ and, uh, Danielle and everything. I call it working with the education department. It's not called that, but no, we're professional services, professional <laughs> services. Yes. Cause I'm going like, <laughs> Uh, we, where all the classes are. We got the education department. We got the marketing <laughs> department. We got so yeah, <laughs> it made some professional services. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm thinking that is my last question. I have a okay. question for you, for you, and I didn't send this to you. Oh, surprise question! All right, I'm ready. Um, and I realize you don't use the software as often as you used to, but if you had, to I use it in my spare time. Okay, if you had to pick a favorite tool in Harmony. What is it and why? Oh, oh no, my favorite tool. Okay, uh, so Birdbrain will probably throw me out a window for this one. I love animating with the brush tool. Oh, As, wow. Like I, I love paperless animation now. I didn't used to, but I love the, the brush tool feels so nice. I love the textured vector brush. That looks really cool. Um, <laughs> Is it? I have a favorite node actually. Okay. I don't know if you ever one. just scrolled through like the the node library, but Rain Three is my favorite Harmony node. Just like pull that into a scene Three. one day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just like just trust me. There's it's. I don't want to ruin the surprise, but Rain Three. There's a couple right. different rains. They're like part of the particle effects. There's a bunch of particle effects that are just like here's a demonstration of particles work, and that one that's my favorite guy. <laughs> that is. As soon as this call is done, I know you have to go edit a thing, but I'm like, gonna go, I'm gonna go go find those. Like, you just gotta go look at Rain Three. Just tell me how you feel. Like a new scent from Calvin Klein. Rain Three. <laughs> it's it's just a perfect note. There's nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I will have to go find that now. That's that's really bugging me. <laughs> like, I didn't know because I didn't know there was. I knew there was a particles because I always tell people like when people like well. Well, what else is there? Just basic stuff. I was like, you have no, you, you wonder how, how far oh, down the rabbit hole do you want to go? It's like, <laughs> so I normally open up the, the library and go, here's a particle system, which I don't really know yet. So don't ask me a lot. <laughs> like, it's a lot here. I've been learning it very slowly recently because I just, I, I don't like that I don't know it. So I've just been like, well, what if I plug this into here and change that parameter? Uh oh. <laughs> but not rain three. I never touch rain three. That one's perfect in every way. Press. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I've got to. Now I've got to go add that because I'm normally fa I normally fake my rain. Um, <laughs> I, pull, I pull in like a um, like a PNG with um, with lines on it, and I've done this because I used to be hardcore just harmony essentials because I didn't want to touch the mm. note. <laughs> so I was like, hey, <laughs> we're gonna take this PNG and we're going to flip it this way then this way, then this way, and so I had four different um, things, and you run those really quick, and all of a sudden you got. Oh yeah, that's a good so idea. Like, that's my favorite thing because people looked at it and go, "Oh, it's the particle system." No, it's not because this is essentials. You have no particles. <laughs> <laughs> there are zero particles. All right, okay, learn the wave particles with me. It'll be great. <laughs> the wave particles—that that, that sounds like a name of a class, like the wave particles. <laughs> Pitch it as the next class. With Katie Renee Decotre. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do I have any more questions? Yes. Yes, left one of those. <laughs> no.
No, I think that's it. Um, yes. So yay, we made it. Awesome. We did it. <laughs> so I hope that tells you everything about online classes. If you want any more. Cool. You know how to reach Actually, me. Actually, yeah. Where, where, where is it? Is it classes.toomboom or where, how do you get there? Is there an address? Oh, what? I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hold on, let me Google it real quick. Just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, if you go to the Toon Boom website and you go, it's actually under services and then okay. under training. Uh, you might get a little tripped up and go to education first. It's not there, services, training. So it's toonboom.com slash services slash training. And you'll see all the courses we currently have up um, to offer. Right now, uh, the dates aren't up for the next one, so we haven't decided on them yet, but those should be um, figured out probably once AJ gets back. Cool, cool, cool. So soon. Soon. Excellent. Well, Katie, this has been awesome. And again, finally, uh, great to uh, video <laughs> meet you since we've already e met. E meet you? <laughs> yes. Well, we've, well, we've, we've e met. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, Zoom meet you? Yes. Zoom, Zoom meet. Lovely. <laughs> Awesome. This has been Tony Ross for the 2D Animation Virtual Summit, hanging out with Katie. Oh, dang it. I always I just had a Katie Renee DeCotre. Yeah, you got it. Nailed it. <laughs> I got, I'm going to say it really quick. So if I slip, you don't notice. <laughs> That's the way you do it. <laughs> All right. Thank uh, you for having me. <laughs> thank you. And um, like I said, tell the Toon Boom fam I said, hey. Of course. All right. Say bye, Katie. Bye. Alrighty, so got a little bit to go here. I'm gonna get ready to pull up onion skin. Mr. Colin Bennett. Hey, this is Tony Ross for the 2D Animation Virtual Summit, and I am hanging out with my virtual friend, because we've never met in person, uh, <laughs> colleague, uh, Mr. Colin Bennett, aka Onion Skin. What's going on, dude? Who has a fickle video feed connection. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Apologies. This cable is dangling by a thread and the lightest touch. Uh, rips it out um but yeah i feel to be here it's good to see you again it's been a while yes it's been been definitely a while um it's been been a long minute um so uh for mm. those of you who don't know who he is because you're rarely on camera like me <laughs> so um how would you how would you like to explain who exactly you are and why are you here uh okay so uh my name is colin but i have a youtube channel called onion skin uh which is a predominantly toon boom harmony focused uh like tutorial and training channel etc um i do work in uh production as well uh, like a, a bit of an all-rounder so I've, I've spent time in uh compositing animation uh rigging uh you know a little bit of boarding and junk like that um, so I've been able to see a little bit of how things go all the way from conceivement uh, to screen. Uh, and I think one of my big fascinations there is sort of what are the efficient ways to do that? Uh, because every production is completely different uh, depending on the style and the story and your staff and all of that. Uh, and trying to figure out the, the the nuances on how that needs to be massaged each time is is really, really fascinating to me. Um, when I first started the channel, though, um, that was back when I was noticing the 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 online scene, like internet animators, were still very much a within a Flash, uh, a, a, like Adobe Animate scene. It was still called Flash at the time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I've been doing this for a little while. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, Toon Boom was very much the industry standard. Uh, and I had been through a similar journey to a lot of my online peers in that way, where I was, you know, a huge fan of how Flash works uh, and found the shift over to using Harmony to be quite 
uh, intimidating at first, but once it clicked, it was like, man, this program is amazing. And I became a huge fan of it. Uh, and I ha- ended up with a bit of a reputation in my local community uh, as being the person who liked to experiment with it and figure out weird things that it could do that the uh, that others wouldn't really uh, tend to, to bother with uh, exploring. Uh, and that really helped with... Um, uh, finding new efficiencies in our pipelines uh, and, you know, a little quality of, your life, quali- quality of life stuff, things like that. Um, and I, I wanted to take that to uh, to a larger community because, like I say, a, a, lo- a lot of uh, younger animators uh, were still learning Flash. Uh, and I knew that if they were to pick up Harmony as their first software, uh, things would it would it would be it would be a better long term investment basically like like they wouldn't have to go through the same headaches that I did having to learn something else and then transition they'd be able to get it right from or not get it right but uh, they would be comfortable with more complicated tools right from the beginning uh, and it would be setting them up for uh, for industry uh, which was great uh, because in those early days uh, I was finding that a lot of the local universities and colleges still weren't teaching Toon Boom yet uh, there was a heavy emphasis on TV paint in a lot of those areas which was great for teaching things like animation fundamentals and the principles and things like that. But then upon getting studio work, they had to be trained on site on how, how do you animate with a rig, which is a completely different uh, pipeline. Like I would describe rig animation closer to stop motion than to hand-drawn. Um, so I, I guess I've yeah been on that little bit of a mission on how do we kind of help close the gap for uh, the community at large. And it's been really fascinating seeing how, things have changed over the years because it really does seem like how many does have that foothold in our community now. Um, and it's constantly evolving. The way that we uh, animate now is completely different to how it was three years ago. Maybe it would be completely different in three years from now. Yes. Uh, so I love uh, talking to all the people in our community, whether it be people who are just starting out or meeting some of my heroes, uh, because we all use this tool in completely different ways. Uh, and it's always really fascinating to see uh, how and why. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coolness. Love that intro. And yeah, I was talking to, um, talking to my wife about this, that in the same way, I think Photoshop has, like everyone and their mother has a totally different way of handling the exact same thing. It might be mm. somewhat similar, but it's not. But, Harmony is pretty much that for animation, because I'll look at um, like I'll look at sometimes the way, for instance, Toon Boom might set up a rig. I'm going, that's interesting. How could I make that more simple? And then I'm doing stuff and go, yeah, I got this to work this way. And then I'll reach out to uh, one of our other colleagues, Ollie, Ollie Putland. And Ollie will go like, what? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Mm. So like, yeah, that's been really it. fascinating, actually, because um, uh, I, I found that there is almost a, a bit of culture when it comes to things like rigging. Uh, mm-hmm. So like, a, you know, a way a lot of people work in Canada is quite different to how people will rig in like Latin America and how they will rig in Ireland to how they rig in Australia. Um, and I, I think a lot of that just comes down to who taught them and what productions right. are they on. Uh, but I had a really interesting time a couple of years ago trying to get uh, just, just talking to as many different people as possible and sort of comparing notes to figure out what was sort of subjective, like what was just a matter of taste and what we preferred. Uh, where did that line stop? And where did the line of what is an objectively better and more efficient method begin? Uh, and there were some really interesting insights that that came out of that. I've been trying to do, if nothing else, um, and I've been trying to push this, um, because across the board, what I try to do is, uh, I and when I'm teaching students, especially in the beginning, is mm-hmm. I'll go, okay, per node view etiquette, <laughs> we want to have, this should be lined up perfectly here. And this- Oh, and, right, yeah. Like, yes, <laughs> will it work if it's over here? Yes, it will. Are people gonna yell at you for it? Yes, they will. <laughs> so it's like, well, no matter how, however you're gonna do this, and t- trying to get like, uh, doing things like, okay, here's your cutter on your cutter node and that whatever you're cutting, it should be directly under that and just kind of, like, yeah, it'll work otherwise. Um, Mm, Yeah, I think I'm really, I think I'm really naughty like that because like in my personal stuff, like I do get very messy and there's stuff everywhere, but always very careful to go and do like a cleanup pass of my system (laughs) otherwise. So it's like, I need to make sure that other people can read this uh, if I'm not there to explain it to them. 
Um, because like, yeah, like, especially when working in compositing where you have to deal with the output of everyone else's node networks to come in, right. it's weird how much of that position can end up just be, end up being like janitorial work of getting <laughs> everything to the point where you can understand what the heck is going on, especially on productions that lean more heavily on the traditional side, but they add a few pegs and deformers in there on the fly. So like, like it's hybrid, but more hand-drawn uh, because a lot of those artists don't really need to look at the node view unless they really, really have to. Right. So that's when you end up opening it up and it's just like a pile of drawing layers slapped over the main composite. Yeah. And you're like, okay, let's see what what's inside this treasure chest. <laughs> okay. That gives me an idea. And um, uh, we got to run with this. <laughs> so we, okay. Like, we have to go like, like you know, because there's always like, hey, you're, what's your job? Or oh, I'm a rigger. I'm this person. It's like, we should actually have a, uh, I don't know if it's animated or if it's almost like an SNL skit, but it's like, like I'm a node view janitor. <laughs> it's like my job <laughs> is to go in. I don't know. Right so you do rigging? No, I just, I clean everything. That's my job. <laughs> Look, I, I'd be uh, lying if I hadn't, stopped and thought if this needed to be a dedicated position at some point <laughs> but frankly i think you're going the right route where it's just it's good to teach people to clean as they go because it, i mean it's for yourself as well it's it's if you receive a note on a thing and you have to open up the same shot again like right. three months later because it's come back at retakes phase yes you've forgotten how you did it uh and you know that can be uh nice just to have things lined up well but when you're on a deadline and when crunch time happens and you've got a quota to meet, uh, keeping things clean is always the first thing to go. Uh, so I totally understand when people don't keep up with it, but, um, it's a, it is a good habit. <laughs> it's just that you're never going to, yeah, you don't get notes back from a director on bad <laughs> notes because no one who's reviewing the art needs to see how the back end has been assembled. It's like, um, who is it? Uh, I was, and again, chatting recently with, um, I had actually hired um, Ollie to help me through some stuff. I was like, yeah. And I kind of knew, you know, let me have this kind of cleaned up before I send it to him. And I was, there are a couple of people, I won't mention the, um, there are some people, and you're not the worst offender, but just to be clear, you're not the worst offender as far as having like really, really awesome functioning things. And you look at the node and go, wait, what's happening? Um, Cause there's, I'll send you a video later. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'd sent, uh, I'd sent my cleaned up version to Ollie and Ollie's no view freaking looks like a graphic design piece. It is so organized and beautiful. I'm like, okay, mine looks really sloppy compared to, or he sent me back something and he dropped in, uh, backdrops with his mm. notes with his notes in there because i've never used the notes section like um this has been edited by ollie at this point <laughs> Honestly, it depends uh, it depends on what you're making uh because yeah. like uh, assuming this was like ollie's like uh constraint style rigs yeah. perhaps mm -hmm. um those are like like you said those are kind of almost an application so mm -hmm. there's that it needs to be like well commented so that someone can sort of navigate around it because yeah. there's certain builds where it's like if you move it a little bit the whole thing explodes uh so you kind of need to know what are like the support structures holding it all together uh whereas um in the more like like traditionally rigged things where frankly like less is more uh where you, it's pretty much just a whole bunch of shapes that you sort of mold like clay over a traditional rough um that it like, like there is such a thing as like over organizing and over labeling it because yeah. you need to have it in such a way where an animator can feel confident going in and changing stuff yes. how can they rewire this on the fly and not have anything uh explode on them as well uh so a lot of time it is just like a couple of backdrops just to sort of like put something over here um i know some people are much bigger fans of groups than others uh where there'll be like groups inside groups inside groups uh and i think there is more of a consensus these days to lean more on backdrops than on groups uh just so that you can sort of see the guts of something uh and 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 pull one string out rather than having to go inside right. um yeah groups tend to appear more when it's like a something that you know for sure that's going to be re reused verbatim so sometimes you see it on limbs because they get like the static transform flip Exactly. On certain yeah. compositing where it's like, oh, this is the nighttime filter. And we turn it into a, like a drag and droppable. Click that in, turns the scene into nighttime, et cetera, et cetera. 
Cool. I've got a question that I'm going to I'm going to throw this out, and it just occurred to me, and so I haven't mm-hmm. sent you this before. So, audience, this is a uh, <laughs> it's like a little hot chair question. Here's a question for you, and I see it pop up more often than not. You'll see people go, "I don't know how to draw. Do I have to know how to draw to be able to animate?" Oh, that's an interesting question. I think you would probably have a hard time, like, landing a career not knowing how to draw. Uh, especially the direction that I believe um, 2D is going in. Uh, because like, yeah, there are like the fully rigged stuff out there where it is just about posing a puppet and you should be okay. Um, but getting these rigs, especially the ones that can do the full 360 turnaround and stuff like that into literally any position you can imagine is really tough. And it can be really time consuming if, if you don't have a good guide. And the best way to get a good guide down is to just sketch out the pose. It doesn't need to be clean or tight um but you need to be able to get the like the anatomy of it down so that you can uh mold the thing into perfection does that count as needing to know how to draw i suppose it's difficult to say because like you don't need to know how to be like a you know like a highly rendered fine artist but you would need to know the fundamentals of how things like perspective and foreshortening and and things like that would work um so not knowing how to draw probably wouldn't kill you, but it certainly would limit your options, I suppose. Like if you were to go grab a, um, uh, probably like what we tend to see more in the preschool scene, like your Peppa Pig style stuff, mm-hmm. maybe you would get away with it there because like everything can just sort of be posed with the way that the rig works and you would never actually need to put pen to tablet. Uh, I don't know exactly how those productions work, but I don't think they need to do a drawn pass first. <laughs> um but uh yeah that's probably my simple answer um but i, I don't that. i don't i don't want to um uh say anything too controversial that way because i know that people have pulled it off right. uh but i don't think you need to be amazing at drawing to get by and i don't think it takes uh a lifetime's worth of effort to get to the point where you've got the fundamentals down because mm-hmm. it's not like uh trying to think of a good example like trying to compare it to music or something like that but uh like i say you you don't need to be the most amazing artist in the world to get by but uh, yeah i feel like the fundamental skills you need aren't too difficult i I know i know the example it's it's like 3d right so so like doing 3d is reference material i don't know i'm not a 3d modeler i don't know how to take things to the end but i do know how to open up the application and work with basic geometry i can make some cubes i can mold it into the shape of a vase uh you know like hypothetically if i was doing a background i could bust open a 3d scene and sort of just like put together a crude geometry of that location so that i know where the things are, I could arrange where the camera goes, take a screenshot of it, and then import it for the sake of painting a background. And it's like, fantastic. Now I don't have to worry about perspective and junk like that. It's kind of like that. Okay. I'm loving yes. that answer. Yes, that is. Yeah, so I'm not a professional <laughs> 3D person at all, but I know enough to survive if I absolutely had to. I like that. I think, uh, what is it? And we always had to do uh, gesture drawing. Um, I always hated drawing class. Um, and I'm I'm regretting that now. I need to start taking it again. But like I I think back to the gesture drawing and the line of action and all these things that mm. um, I look at my work or my when I do animate, I'm going, oh man, that's really nasty. Or then when, when, as opposed to when I look at uh, people like yourself or Ollie or let's say Matt Watts, and I'll look at some of the these beautiful lines of action that they do. I'm like. Yeah, I should really go study some of those courses. <laughs> yeah, I was curious to ask about that actually, because like if I remember right, you don't consider yourself much of a much of an illustrator, is that right? Or maybe things I change. don't. And the irony is, I started school as an illustration major. Interesting. But I think um, I was um, I was a slack student, and I think I was also. Um, very self-medicated, we'll say, <laughs> going through the, the early parts of college. And I, I remember that um, each time I go to illustration class, my concepts, the idea I had uh, was usually like a B and my execution was a C minus. And mm. I was like, I'm going to switch to computer art. <laughs> and so mm. I did. Um, and uh, the irony is, um, I remember working on something in Photoshop. And again, I learned Photoshop before it had layers. And so I'd learned how to airbrush and make all these cool things. I, I writ- wrote out my name 
like each letter and like uh, an animated or not animated, but I drew it with had this glassy gloss feel to it. And my anime, my illustration professor was walking through the lab one day, uh, Mr. Clint Scott. I'm not sure if, I have to see if he's still around, uh, but he goes, did, did you draw that? Oh, well, yeah. It's like, son, you've come a very long way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, always the best compliment, isn't it, isn't it? When like, someone doesn't believe you. that you've made something. <laughs> like, yes, I love that. It's like, but yeah, uh, and I don't know. I still, I still, the, I didn't study as much drawing. I, I remember the day when I didn't have any more drawing classes and I was so excited about it. But I'm thinking like, I probably should still be drawing. Um, I could do a lot better. Uh, and I catch myself every time I see, like, um, on latest, the, some of the latest projects I did, I did not mm-hmm. do, uh, working on, uh, the animation study, working with Toon Boom, the character we made C-Note, I basically kind of dictated what I wanted him to look like, but I purposely hide, hired people who knew how to do character and, uh, character <laughs> design and who had to draw, literally draw circles around me and going, I'm not drawing anything. Oh yeah, totally. I do that too. <laughs> Y'all can handle this. This is my idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go. Yeah. I think that's important too. Like sort of knowing that like, when is someone else just like more specializes in a, in a particular thing, like, and that could be something really specific, like just a, a particular style or whatever. Um, because like when it comes to drawing, like I don't consider myself to be like, that crash out like like i know ne- i never get hired for um uh like full traditional productions like i've never been like a like a rough animator on on the ground or whatever i'd like to do it for, if i'm honest with myself though i don't think i have the chops to really like s- survive a whole whole production in that like s- be able to meet quota and not get a thousand notes every shot etc cetera, etc cetera. <laughs> um but uh oh golly i've already lost my chain of thought on where that was going um oh yeah, yeah yeah so so like the kind of drawing that i do in my personal time uh because you got me thinking that i don't do a whole lot just for fun whereas a lot of my friends that's what they do they'll get home from work and they'll like fill a sketchbook with these like beautiful watercolors and stuff like that right. um whereas the most kind of drawing that i do in my book is is, is basically like doodling so it's like you know, relatively passive, uh, just like in the margins, sort of like back in school sort of thing. (laughs) Um, But what's very interesting about that is that it's very, very rare that something will be rendered and finished, but there's just lots and lots of very deliberate experimentation where it's just like making shapes and seeing what they can do. Uh, So there's a lot of like, I guess, like passive practice in that regard because what i'm making is not intended to be seen by anyone else yes um because i remembered many many years ago um uh when i would like carry an actual sketchbook around and there would be that sort of reputation especially because i grew up in a town where i was the only person who like did anything like arty at all right right so i didn't i didn't have to be decent to still have like a bit of a reputation for that kind of thing, if that made sense. <laughs> yes, it does. So people would always be asking if they could see what's in the sketchbook. Uh, and that um, would lead to a weird level of anxiety pretty quickly because it meant that everything in the book had to be something presentable. <laughs> uh, and so, and that would slow me down. That, that would stop me from drawing for fun because it was like, oh no, now this is a thing that needs to be like presented. Um, so I kind of like, laid the hammer down eventually he's like you know what i'm gonna stop showing this to people uh this is this is just for me uh and that really really helped um i guess just like mentally because like now i had the freedom to muck around right. uh and do things badly on purpose just to see what would happen uh and to take deliberate risks in that regard uh and i've been able to learn a tremendous amount that way uh because whenever I'm drawing, it's in a totally risk-free environment. Uh, cause, so yeah, whenever it does come up for a client job, uh, thankfully I've been able to get by, <laughs> but I, uh, like you, I, I am definitely not, um, uh, I feel no shame in, uh, delegating. Um, <laughs> cause I would rather give it to someone who I know is able to smash it out first time. No worries. Um, yeah. So yeah, man, me personally, I, I'm, I was talking to my class recently, because even when I'm 
showing them, okay, here we're going to do an overshoot. We're going to do this. And I said, and, and for the record, I'm not an animator. I'm a trainer. <laughs> it's, like, mm-hmm. it's, like, it's like, I can animate. I can draw. I don't consider myself an artist. I'm like, I'm kind of a hack. Let me just kind of Ooh, that's a really interesting thought, actually, when it comes to teaching different kinds of students as well, depending on their background, if they have one in art or not. Yes. Um, because I don't know if you agree with this, but I find like it usually falls into two camps where you got the people who are like, and these are, these are sort of like your extreme stereotypes, right? Where you got one who's like the really arty farty person mm-hmm. where it's just very much about just like color and shapes and story and emotion uh, to the point where technology is terrifying. Right. And then you've got people on the other extreme where techno- the, the tech really speaks to them and they love learning the tools and somehow get into their head that simply understanding what all the buttons do will make them a great artist, <laughs> which may not be the case. <laughs> Uh, and when it comes to showing concepts like uh, anticipation and overshoot and the principles like that, uh, I ended up with several different methods of explaining it just because it would completely register with different people in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, because like I always can, cons- I, I guess I'd ended up taking things like anticipation and overshoot for granted a little bit because, right. you know, you kind of just, you show some examples from life on how things sort of go over the top and then settle back again and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, the really arty people sort of register with that and they'll sort of time it out just by drawing it in real time and maybe timing charts and things will come later. Um, and, but at first they sort of just need to muck around with drawing four dimensionally, basically. Uh, whereas those coming more from the technology end, um, I found that they really struggled to process the idea of, uh, a movement, like, cause they learn about motion tweens first, right? Interpolation, something goes from position A to position B. Right. And the idea of something going beyond a hundred percent and then coming back again, just blew their minds. And, and, and they couldn't wrap their heads around that concept. Like I've showed lots of examples where it's just like, yes, this is going beyond and then coming back again. And they're like, uh, what? And it wasn't until I showed the graph, like the, the, the easing chart with the little oh, S wow. curve. Right. When Mm -hmm. I showed that chart, because they understood what a standard ease was. Right. And then when I showed an anticipation overshoot where it dipped below zero and then shot up beyond a hundred and then came back down again, it clicked and they could do it. And I found that really, really fascinating because showing that to the traditional artists, they was just like, what's this weird chart mean? I went, uh, I went a different direction and, um, cause I normally, even when I'm teaching, I, I'm usually not on camera. Um, but what I would tell people was the, um, and I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to switch to my camera for a second because this is on recording. All right. So what I would tell people would be um, if you're throwing a ball, like you don't just gonna mm. instantly go forward, you're going to go back and then go forward. Or the way that I used to teach this was this is a sneeze. Anticipation is the ah before the chew. So it's like that. Ah. Oh, that's good. I like yeah. that. So that that's my, I think that was the first time that I went into uh, trying to explain that thing. Like, it's like, oh, it's, it's the ah, chew. It's like, so you're, your, your body is going backwards. It's going to go back uh, before doing that. Or uh, if you're throwing that ball, your hand doesn't just go instantly forward. It's going to go back and then forward. Mm. Um, and that's what I've actually gotten. Because I, yeah, I, the, the 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 little graphs because I teach um, not only harmony but I also teach After Effects and mm-hmm. yeah that's I, very graph dependent isn't it yes I am still trying to get comfortable it's one of the, and you know this it's like it's one thing to get to figure out how to do something that's something totally different to figure out how to teach it <laughs> it's like it's oh like, fully oh, it's yeah like, and not a lot of quote unquote teachers know that because uh, I'm sure you have <laughs> this as well like uh, in the tumor training side of things where you're teaching like university professors and stuff like that yes yeah and i find that to be a completely different ball game because like half the session it's not just showing what the tools are but sort of discussing how do we relay this information on yes um how do we how do we talk about these topics in a way that your students are likely to um not just understand it but like have it resonate and they can be enthusiastic about about this stuff um and that's yeah, very, very different. Like, like probably less than half the session sometimes is actually going over tools, but rather just like discussing how, 
discussing teaching methods and things yes. like that, <laughs> yeah. to, which I guess I, is what we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah. And then what is the other thing the, I have, because a lot of times, um, and this is, this is a perfectly thing. And it's not, it's not just because they are one of our sponsors. Thank you, Tim Pim. Um, but it's also literally, uh, one of the conversations that I had when they first hired me to uh, start doing trainings for them, I said, yes, yeah, Tony, you're going to be teaching um, high school teachers so they can teach their students. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so awesome. I've really been wondering when you guys are going to start really pushing um, Harmony Essentials, you know, and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're going to be doing Harmony, Harmony Premium. Oh, <laughs> it was like because in my head, I had a similar reaction because yeah, I was like, Okay, because I kept thinking, well, yeah, Harmony Essentials is, you know, that the teen kind of thing. And and part of my brain was going, well, if we're learning premium in high school, what are we doing in college? So it's like it was like because it was a massive shift from, uh, I guess, when I was in school and I and I started school late. So mm. it's one of those things of coming in and a lot of times it is that thing of, Hey, how do we convey this across? Well, hey, I'm never going to use that or how would it actually work? And so I found myself not only doing that, but kind of going uh, like I was teaching. What was it? Uh, Storyboard Pro. And so I was presenting the argument and said, well, if you're doing a report on the uh, the American Revolution, <laughs> here's how you can actually you can actually have these little little animatics of the little characters moving across. And it doesn't have to be animated, but this is this, you know, but if you're doing this yeah. storyboarding, yes, we're not going to use full color stuff, you know. Um, I find that when it comes to uh, high schoolers uh, and premium is the tool on offer as opposed to going with essentials. Because uh, personally, I still think like essentials is probably one of the best places to start because um, I get uh, a pretty large influx of students and just like viewers uh, coming in who are feeling uh, like surprisingly, like, like very anxious. Like, like I'm talking like People have been telling me that they're like borderline panic attack level because they feel like they are obligated to learn literally every single tool in the software before they're even allowed to start animating. No. Uh, and it takes a bit of work to sort of calm them down and be yeah. like, you don't need, to, you know, like like most people only end up using like 15% of the tools that's, you know, yeah. appropriate to their, their method. Um, and I think starting with essentials is pretty ideal in that way because it hones it down to what it says on the tin really like like it's everything is a little bit more presentable to sort of grasp but all of the fundamentals are there where you've got you know you can learn how the drawing substitution system works uh the vector management is still fine um there are still some deformers and whatnot in there so uh if you're sort of starting that off as like like a high schooler or a hobbyist it's ideal because like it's 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 affordable and you can figure out basically everything that the program can do and still pull off what you are imagining and create your films like you're not making a whole tv series at the beginning <laughs> you probably just want to make shorts for youtube or tiktok or something like that right um and you, so there's no need to overdo it however if you stick with it like not only are you learning the interface and the tools of the industry standard software um if you find that you stick with it uh every little piece that you make you're gonna like level up a little bit right. uh, until eventually you get to the point where you grow out of it and you think you know what i'm i'm fighting against this software now where uh, like i'm having to really push it to make it do the things that i want it to do uh and that's basically a sign that it's time to upgrade uh and then when you level up suddenly advanced in premium aren't quite so intimidating anymore because you've already learned how the program works and you've been craving the features that you don't have so when you get access to them like you're like keen you're like yeah i want to i want to start making use of these tools that if i had if if you jumped into a really complex node view right from day one it probably right. would have been a little a little much um which is still the case a lot of the time because like you know like a lot of animators coming out of school uh, and then get an industry job and they have to animate on a rigged production so they they, they see they they see a full character back there and it's just like cool oh boy um you know they, they all figure it out like like it's it's not too bad but it's it's like a good way to av avoid that initial anxiety i suppose or be able to embrace the tools that you have anyway what i was getting to was um when doing stuff straight for high schoolers if i do have premium on hand uh i still don't go into like super high-end stuff maybe i'll show off one production level rig just to sort of just 
show off a bit and just right. be like, this is where you'll get to one day right. uh, because it looks really cool just sort of seeing one and not reading <laughs> it. Um, but I think it is nice being able to talk about things like just how do nodes work right. compared to layers uh, and also envelope deformers. Those two things in particular are super, super nice to be able to show off to someone new at the very beginning, which you don't have in Essentials. At least I'm pre- I don't think Essentials has envelope performers. No, Essentials doesn't have, it just has bones, um, the yeah, yeah. bone and the regular bone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that whole thing of finding that um, sweet spot. And it's like you said, the, you're not, you don't have to know everything about the, system and i think even now because there's like there's a lot that i don't know and i've never bothered with <laughs> it's like uh like you i still argue you could you could almost do um i was explaining this to someone so technically you could do a full length feature and never even open the node view it's then when you do find you're like oh crap i can add this to that you mean oh you mean i can yeah, add it depends what you're doing especially yeah. if it's a uh, like a paperless Thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, full traditional. Like you'll probably spend most of your time like in the X shape rather yeah. than the node view. Uh, and then only maybe a compositor will open it up at, at the end. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, I was going to bounce off from that, but I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Let me ask you this. Uh, what do you like most about using um, Harmony? Uh, I think it's versatility. The fact that it is this, this, just bonkers sandbox uh, where there are tons and tons of tools. Oh, and this uh, this does take me back to the bit that I forgot, uh, which was that even after using it for 10 years, there are still moments where someone will point out a button that I've never properly considered before. And I'll just be like, whoa, what? Uh, Cause like, yeah, like I'm showing off, you know, five different ways to perform the same action. Right. And then someone will show me a sixth way that I've never thought of. I'm yes. just like, what? Uh, because like a lot of the time uh, people will kind of, encounter a problem and then they'll figure it out uh, and they'll find their own unique solution and then just kind of roll with that for the next several years. Maybe there would have been a more efficient solution that they hadn't considered, but I love swapping notes with people in that regard. There's even been a few occasions where I've asked animators to just record their process for like half a day and I just get like a three hour recording and I play it back at 10,000% speed just to see if there's any uh, little treasures like that. Um, That, you know, sometimes it's like, things that I can show them, but equally it can be things that they can show me, which is really, really fascinating. Um, and one of my favorite parts about uh, exploring these features and uh, teaching it to people is finding what I just call the golden nuggets. This is especially to those who have been using the program for some time already. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's just going to be one or two little things that will just change their life once it gets pointed out. And it's a really interesting moment because you can't quite tell if they're excited or disappointed because you can kind of see their soul leave their body a little bit because they realize they've been doing it the slow way for years. I did that recently. um, And I think I was in, I was teaching a class and I was, cause I'm I'm always trying, I'm constantly watching um, as you Mm. you mentioned, you're constantly watching other people use the program and for the longest time i had been teaching using the line tool like well yeah yeah the line tool is great because we're gonna gonna pull this down here and then i want to go to my contour editor and bend this and then i saw someone go like oh no no you're you're you pull the line tool and before you let go you you hold on your command i'm like wait what (laughs) it's like and like curving the lines like while you're still in the line tool it's like this is and it's like you're going like Wait, how long has that been there? Has, has, has that been there the whole the whole time? The whole time? Uh, how many twenty? So it's not that old. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, but oh, now oh. that you mention, I think you might have just done it for me um, because I knew that that was a thing, but via tool properties, where it's it's got three options. There's like a yeah. straight line, a bendy line, and a wavy line. Right. This where is like still, when you the straight line. Yeah. So you do the straight line and then you hold because like there's the three buttons. So like I'll go to the middle one where it's the bendy line where you draw the line, you let go, and then it sort of follows your mouse and then you click to confirm. But right. you're telling me I can use the regular straight line and hold control and it will do it? Yeah, like if you're on, like if I'm on, I'm on a Mac, so I have- Oh my Mac. God. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. 
There you go. You've yeah, done I, it right there. <laughs> cool. Okay. So cool. I've, I've been no, switching no. back and forth between those two tools and tool properties. No, I had no idea that there was a shortcut yeah. for it. That's it. <laughs> Amazing. Who would have thought we'd do it in real time, huh? Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was, I, and I almost feel like I, we have to do almost do, almost do a, I'm going to see if I can do an overlay in, uh, in, in post to go like, what are they talking about? No, no Yeah, it's totally. Because like, <laughs> that's one of my favorite ways to draw in the program too, especially when building a rig where every, every, every stroke needs to be very deliberate. Yes. Uh, I want the vector points to be on particular points and stitching together and whatever else. Uh, I, f I found that bendy line to be a lot faster than even the polyline. Yes, um, definitely faster than the polyline. And then if using the bendy line, um, on oh, matter of fact, let me, let me see. Is my, hold on, is my harmony open? Hold on. Yes, it is. Hold on one second. I'm going to share my screen in a second. In a second. Da, 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 da. All right, let me share my screen. All right, let me move you down there. Great, let me turn this off for a second. All right, so um, one of the other things that I do, um, besides just using the line tool, let me get a decent, hold on my O key. Where are my little commands, thank you. Hold on my O key, get that a little bit bigger great so not only using the line tool here but of course you like you pull that out get a larger brush here okay so you pull that there we go pull that out i'm still holding my mouse down hold on command i can bend that but in addition to this coming down here and adding on things like the line building mode um mm. Thanks, uh, Lindsay Nolar showed me, showed me this one. Between that and then also adding snapping. So when I come up here, okay, cool. That's going to snap directly to that point. Uh, let me bend that line. I have no idea what the heck I'm build, building here. <laughs> so it's like, but matter of fact- no, but that's say, a great combo. And I think you're right. I don't think I had considered combining both of those like that. Right. Uh, to make coming off the previous line so much easier. Yes. And of uh, course, K. Because I love have, line builder mode. Oh, yes. But I don't tend to use contour snapping all that often. Yeah. It's uh, using those. And of course, we have no holes in here whatsoever. I'm like, mm. Yeah. There is also, uh, I'd, I'd be curious, have you, have you tried just using the Alt key as well? I have not. Um, so that is like, like turn snapping off, but leave line builder mode on. Turn snapping off. Okay. Uh, and now begin your stroke holding the Alt key down already. Ooh. Okay. So I, uh, the alt key is like a temporary snap. Okay. I'm liking that. And, mm. now and, it, and it works the other way around as well. So if you're already drawing and then you slam down on the alt key right. before you finish, then it will attach itself to the uh, closest stroke. Okay. Nice. This is cool. <laughs> there you go. There's not uh, little nuggets everywhere. Um, similarly, uh, like so, that's one thing. Like like pointing out the just buttons that you might not have considered before. But another is uh, what you just did, which is like different combinations that once it's been pointed out, you're like, yeah, how did I never thought of that before? Yes. Um, and I I had one with the student just the uh, just a couple of days ago, um, where I'll, I'll hijack the live the screen share if I may. Okay. I'll let me stop my share. All that thought. Right. Where I was having, I, I was having a student where they were dealing with, um, there was sort of like the next person down the chain and they were dealing with someone who had been drawing uh, accidentally with the gap closer turned on. So you know how it is where you just have tons and tons of little false, these guys. <laughs> are you, are you sharing yet? Oh no, did it not turn on? My bad. <laughs> green two there we go happens every time um uh so yeah they they were receiving work from someone who was working with the gap closer on by mistake uh so they always had these little bits appearing in oh, places wow. where they didn't want them to appear because like you know you move the artwork it leaves the stroke behind yes um so like that was the first piece it was like okay well that's how we can avoid your colleague from having those strokes appear uh all over the place um, but a part of their workflow was having to go through every frame and
and get rid of all of these little invisible stroke scraps that had just been left everywhere. And right. they're going in with the black arrow tool, like interweaving and trying to get all the bits out. Uh, and fortunately, I was able to point out for them uh, that, like, did you know that the invisible strokes count as a color? And the select by color tool will just grab them all in one hit. Holy. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I, I did not know that. Uh, and furthermore, uh, speaking of cool combos, is if you combine that with the apply to all frames button, then you can pick <laughs> up all the scraps across the entire animation in one go and just get rid of them. Wow. Okay, that was... Wow. Okay. Now, similarly, their method, which they pointed out to me, was uh, that they would go to drawing, optimize, uh, remove contour strokes, mm -hmm. which which I, I, I think I knew that existed, but, like, I'd never... I'd never used it. So like, I was just like, Oh yeah, that's a thing. Um, so I, I was like, I, I was actually thinking maybe that way's better. Have I been going the slow way by using select by color this whole time? Mm -hmm. But when I combined it with the apply to all frames, right. like, yeah, I, I, I saw a piece of them die inside. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Alrighty. So yes, that was me hanging out with, uh, Colin Bennett, aka Onion Skin. Brad Eaton says, "Amazing tip." I know, right? Uh, that I wish I could tell you that we we had planned that and faked it, but it's like there was. That's the one thing I'm talking to uh, like-minded individuals, and one of my sneaky ways as to why I'm had I had, have the summit in the first place is asking my colleagues these different questions and. It was cool because a lot of times we didn't necessarily, we planned on showing some stuff, but it was like, oh yeah, by the way, did you know you can do this? And we're like, wait, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and so it's kind of kind of cool actually when you have those moments there. Um, what I want to do before we go to break, before, before, before. Uh, no, no, quit that okay um what i want to do before we go to break um i'd set up these little guys here several things I actually forgot hey dude why the heck is that keyframe there it shouldn't be any keyframes right now ah, nah, 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 nah. get rid of all of our keyframes by pressing F7, thank you. Great. So um, I've been playing around rigging this arm. And one thing, um, if I collapse this on my timeline, uh, we now see this. So what I'm going to do is do um, basic little pose here. <laughs> Like some I knew, others I didn't. Very informative. Cool. <laughs> Glad we could help. <laughs> that was great. Thanks, Smo. That's the golden nuggets. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Need a notebook of just key commands. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so let me dive back over here. Um, so one of the things I can do here, I'm going to drop in a keyframe at the very first thing here. Let's do F6. And um, kind of what we were talking about uh, with Colin, talking about doing an anticipation. Um, I'm going to have, have this arm do a point. So if I go, by the way, this is actually something pulled from uh, one of the Tomb Boom classes. So um, right in fundamentals this is a modified thing that I usually teach. So in frame two, I'm going to first drop in a keyframe, F6. I'm going to rotate this entire arm back a bit. Let's turn on Mr. Onion Skin. Hello, sir. Thank you. And so this is an anticipation, meaning the arm is going to go backwards before it goes up into getting ready to do a point. I'm going to go down the hierarchy. So if I do Shift B, can bend that a little bit. Do shift B again and bend the hand. So what we have is here going to there, there, there. 
by the way, if you notice these little greens and reds, um, these are the defaults for the onion skin. Green is something in front. Red is the frame behind. And what I'd like to do, so that Colin is always coming up with interesting things on his YouTube channel. Yes, oh my gosh. The full interview, I think he shows, um, he built out a uh, little loop generator thing, which, I am disgustingly envious of, um, but yeah, we're, I think we're probably going to do, we are talking about building out a, uh, crowd, um, cause we both, I think had started, um, animating like originally using flash and there's certain things that flash was able to do, but then we weren't able to do in harmony. Yes. There, there's one tiny little thing, but that was remedied mostly when I came up with, um, the little timing nodes in harmony. So, um, he's been playing around with those a lot lately. So let me come over here. Okay. Um, next one, let's do F six. Uh, here I'm going to rotate my arm a bit. Go shift B, come down to hierarchy. Shift B again. So we go here, here, here. Uh, probably going to bring that back a little bit more. And last but not least, drop in a keyframe, F6. I'm normally dropping in my keys before I start moving things. Bring the arm down, Shift B. Rotate this down. Shift B again. Rotate here. So from here, break the joint a little bit. Matter of fact, Let's break it a little more, like, ouch, there. Go there, there, here, then there. And if I wanted to spread these out, I can select one of the keys. On my keyboard, I'm simply gonna press the plus key on my extended keyboard. Either your extended keyboard or do you simply shift equals. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, maybe. What is five laying me on? Cool. Um, it means that you gave me a little tween there. One, two, three. Hmm. Four, five, thank you. And one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, how bad does this look? If I play this. Let's loop that. All right. Not terrible. Um, I might shorten this first one so I can select a keyframe, press minus. All right, so from here to there, give myself maybe two more. Two? Yeah, that'll work. already and what I'm going to do now is show off a little bit here uh, we said we're gonna make this arm point technically something I didn't actually show you this hand the actual original artwork has what's called a drawing substitution so I'll show you the window that I almost never use because I usually use my keyboard shortcuts drawing subs thank you meaning hey there we are Point, splayed, default. So I would look here and go, well, where do I want the hand to start going to a point? Uh, like maybe right there. Not a keyframe, mind you, but let's go there. So if you look at my timeline, it's like everything is regular hand, then it switches there. Cool, down there, it's a little close to my tool properties go to peg selection mode thank you ah there we are um that's pointing downward let's maybe point you up there all right um now a modified trick that i learned from matt watts modified um but i'm going to do a little bit of an overshoot meaning that i want this hand to go out further than what it's supposed to then come back to this little resting spot. So I'll select this keyframe, copy it, Command C. 
Um, and then while I'm still here, I'm going to stretch this, which a lot of people don't do on vectors. And it's like, it's not written in stone. You can actually bend and distort it. Uh, let's press B, go up to hierarchy, break that joint just a little bit. B again, bend the arm down, shift B, shift B, maybe point that downward. Don't want this to skew a little, maybe. Yeah, just a little. And then, if I come in, what, a couple of frames later, paste that original. That means that it goes here and then relaxes or settles there. All right, it's that little jerk that you wouldn't notice until you saw that it was there. Let's see, where are we on time? Oh, perfect, I think, ish. Now, I'm going to do something that's very ugly and it's what the way I like to um, introduce people to certain things. It's not the best way to do it because um, I can hear uh, the bird brain yelling at me. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Uh, artwork, I call our main floor. Our pegs up here, that's our attic. Let's do some work in the basement, meaning um, this is cool and all, but you still have little lines down here. So about that, uh, let's bring up a few things. And again, this is just an intro to this. I'll show you the advanced one tomorrow. Um, if I go, I need to bring up something called an auto patch. Auto patch. All right, what does an auto patch do? Well, let's talk about our drawings here. If I go to the forearm, go to my drawing view, this is the line work. There's also color art, line art, color art. So traditional animation, think about it this way. You draw the line on one part of the cell. You would flip that cell over and then you draw the fill color. That's kind of what's going on here. All right, so what this auto patch is going to do, this line, let's say, um, it's actually a line. So it goes right up into this little middle here. What the auto patch does is it pays attention to the outer border here and tells the color only to go to the outer border versus, uh, I quit that, versus having the color go all the way up to that line. It'll stop right here. So, go back to my line art, thank you. Uh, auto patch, hold on my option key, let's pull it in. And yeah, it's only showing the color, but hey, we got rid of one of those lines. Let's get rid of the other line. Uh, anything that we move toward the left is gonna be in the front. Great, so both of those lines are gone. What is missing? The line art, okay, cool. Can you add another node for that? Sure. Uh, line art, there you are. Let's pull you over here. Line. I'll put that in front. Dude, that's not what we want. How about I move this over here, place it behind everyone. Okay, that's better. And so now when we play this, all right, now, one extra little thing, let's go up here. This is cute and all, but this is kind of rubbery and kind of stretch arm strong. Because if I had drawn this out traditionally, um, you'd think I would probably come in there and do something like, hmm, add a little crease where that wrist is, you know. Um, and people might be thinking, well, this is a problem with cutout animation. Eh, sort of. Let's go back and look at our artwork for the forearm. All right, so there is the line art. Here's the color art, line art, color art. With each drawing layer, you actually have four little sub layers, the art layers here. So not only is there line art and color, but there's also overlay. And we don't see overlay right now because Auto Patch was showing us the color art that's been cut down a bit. Line art's just doing the line art. But this, is pretty much the line art plus they cut off the little edges there and they tapered the edges a bit using one of the uh, little drawing tools. Like if I click on this, you'll see 
how they've tapered that down toward the ends. That's kind of cool. But how do we get that to work for us? Well, same way as we pull up line art, we'll pull up overlay. And let's place it right over there. I'm going to pull this little guy here and place this in front of everyone. And we now have a little crease going on there. A little fold in the arm that is dynamically working with everything. So yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now again, this is not the best way to rig this out, but it kind of shows you some of the little tricks of how the node view works. All right. Meanwhile, um, we're going to take a break. We're going to break for lunch. And when we come back, pretty much, I think, at like 105, maybe, we'll be um, showing Mark Simon's seven pitch fails. So those of you who are thinking about trying to do a pitch or trying to find different things, there are things you might think you know, or in some cases, you're listening to the wrong people. Um, one of Mark Simon's first jobs was working for someone, some dude named Steven Spielberg. So maybe Mark has a little bit of information on this since he's pitched um, like multiple things. Like I want to say it's over 20 or 30. And then he's actually taught people how to do that. Um, so yeah, anyway, I would suggest you kind of listen to these because there are a couple of them that I didn't know. So that'll be at like around 105, pretty much when I break, take a break for lunch, come back and take a look at that. Meanwhile, enjoy your lunch. Um, we'll be updated. We'll be logging on probably right before one. Um, and we'll be updating our animationsummit.net little link. So it should go directly to there. All right. Enjoy your lunch. Bye.